All right, good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Berwick Planning Board regular meeting for, let's see, this is uh, Thursday, May 2nd, 2019. If we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> All right, plenty of board members present tonight. We have uh, Noah Cobb. He's going to be, he's an alternate, but tonight he'll be a, a regular voting member. We also have the vice chair, uh, Niall Shore. We have Paul Bovere. We have Nicole Fecto absent tonight is uh, alternate Mike LaRue and also Sean Winston, a regular member. I'd like to open up the public comment session to, also we have our, uh, we have our town planner here. We have our code enforcement officer. We have our uh, planning technician and Berwick webmaster and Facebook administrator and anything else that the town manager gives them. We also have the town manager here and uh, various members of the public. I'd like to open up a, uh, the public comment session. It's open to any resident or property owner in the town of Berwick to come forward and talk about anything that relates to the planning board. We have two public hearings scheduled for this evening, so um, you can have an opportunity to talk about those two applications on the public hearing tonight in that, but public comment session is now open. Feel free to come forward to the podium. <clears throat> You're talking about the buildings that you just went through? We're going to have, uh, which buildings that we? The site walk. The site walk, we're gonna have a public, we're gonna have a public hearing immediately after this. Oh, that's not for this then. That's right. not for that. Anything else that relates to the planning board public comment session? All right, seeing nobody come forward, close the public comment session, moving on to the approval of minutes for the April 18th, 2019 meeting. And we'll start with Mr. Bovere. Thank you, Dave. Um, one thing, and I'm not sure, I think I know the answers, but I have to ask um, for the uh, subdivision on the back Sanford Road and the minutes, it says major subdivision. On the plan, it says minor subdivision. And I think it's because one lot was done two years ago, which by state law makes it a major subdivision. That's correct. So we should only call this a major subdivision. Is that correct? That would be correct. Even on the plan? I think I have given paperwork a state statute that makes it so it's still minor. You did. Went over it. Yeah, I gave it to them last meeting. It's we called it minor last meeting too. I, I I know, and I picked out on it last meeting, and I thought because it was in the on the agenda as minor subdivision, and then I think I see major subdivision in several places. If so I just this is confusing. That's why I'm bringing this up. If the lot was split within five years, unless the person had lived there five years previously, then even if it isn't counted as a numbered lot in the subdivision, it has to be included as part of the process. Part of the process. That's correct. That's state law. Yes. So it is, this is a major subdivision. That would be correct. And that would be the term to be used, even though it doesn't apply to any changes. And it, it doesn't apply to the process yeah. as well. So can we somehow just correct that and uh, on the minutes, call it, uh, it's actually correct from the minutes, but not on the plan. Thank you. That's it. That's it. Anybody else? So the motion will be for the approval of the minutes, as I'll, is. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of April 18th as amended. Second. As amended? As amended. Oh, I'm sorry. I withdraw that. The amendment will be somewhere else. Um, as written. Okay, so we have Still a motion. Still second. Motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Next on the agenda is a public hearing for conditional use application medical marijuana production facility 398 School Street. R3 zone with frontage on Route 9. Applicant is David Springer. This is a public hearing to talk about this application only. Feel free to come forward to the podium. Just state your name and your address for the record and for our viewers at home. Public hearing is open for this application. 
If you'd like to talk about this application for the medical marijuana production facility at 398 School Street, please come to the podium. Hi. You have, you have to come to the podium. Sorry. That's okay. And just state your name and your address for our minutes and uh, record. Lorraine Hughes, uh, 404 School Street in Berwick, Maine. Uh, my complaint is uh, the lights that are shining into my house at night constantly and the smell of marijuana. I mean, I can't open my windows. I, I'm still smelling it. I mean, they put filters in it. And the smell went down, but I'm still smell getting the smell. I have to shut my windows in my house. I can't sit out in my backyard or anything because of the smell. And I don't know why they don't put up a fence, you know, or down the lights or so do something. And he said he was going to do that, Mr. Springer. He said he was going to do that. So, I mean, we've heard this before, but it did, and they didn't do anything. So. I'm here to present that for that. I don't like the marijuana place that they put in back of my yard, but I guess I don't have anything to say about it. So. Okay, so lights and the smell. Yes. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. This is a public hearing for the medical marijuana production facility at 398 School Street. Feel forward. Uh, please feel free to come to the podium. One and only chance. Going once, going twice. All right, we'll close the public hearing. We have another public hearing tonight scheduled for conditional use application. It's a parking facility at 71 Sullivan Street, map U3, lot 11. It's in the CI zone. The applicant is the town of Berwick. This is a public hearing only for this application. All right, Mrs. Sheldon, go ahead. Louisa Sheldon, 65 Sullivan Street, and what you were just given is exactly what I have in hand. I'm not going to read all the articles that I think is, um, you know, I don't want to define them all for you. Um, everything that's been outlined. Um, you received a letter, I believe the chairman was copied on correspondence from our attorney, uh, Sarah McDaniel, back October 29th. Um, but we are here to emphasize that for over 30 years, the town of Berwick has cost me personally thousands of dollars in unnecessary property damages, including unnecessary legal fees due to repetitive negligent enforcement of land use regulations. The town of Berwick has been aware of this for at least 30 years. Since the purchase of the abutting property, I am once again forced to hire representation for its deliberate negligence. Under the law, the town has obligations as a neighboring landowner since purchasing this parcel. The land use regulations for the Berwick Land Use Ordinance applies to all land and all structures within the boundaries of the town of Berwick, and the town must comply with the land use ordinance and is not exempt from the local permitting requirements. LUO 1.4, it requires that a permit be obtained by any person, which includes the municipality, before they shall expand, change, or replace any existing use or structure, which what was done, what was done with the sober home. Um, it's been in process for since almost two years. Um, the negotiation aspect, I complained at that time. I wanted uh, recognition for setbacks, draining, uh, stormwater management, um, especially the setbacks and the cars, as that parcel is no longer grandfathered. And um, as you referred to it at your April 18th meeting, which I thought was only an informational meeting, um, where this application was presented with design plans from 
draft design plans for the community center that you're hoping for, um, no assignment of plans actually has been input into the parking. It's pretty much been a happenstance parking situation that's been operating without a permit for over a year. The main state law clearly states 30.A MRS 4352, county and municipal governments and districts are subject to any zoning ordinance. Section 9.4 was applicable before the town could begin use on 71 Sullivan Street. Pertinent ordinance standards impose significant buffering requirements. As I said, I'm not going to read you your articles. Land use ordinance 9.8.I.1B, E, F, and J are all applicable to this property. And a more extensive application would be required if the proposed use also included an expansion of 5,000 square feet of impervious surface. The parking lot that you have created is probably expanded at least that much. What was graded and resurfaced, fill was brought in, grading was changed. So I don't think you've submitted the right application for this. Also applicable in the land use is 7.2 and 7.5, 7.7. Additionally, the stormwater discharge performance standards, noxious discharge standards, and other performance standards apply. In articles LUO 7.16, 7.17, 7.21, 7.22, the original sober home parking lot had been limited to 22 cars at its inception. With a mandated spike fence in agreement with this abutter for an additional lattice on top of it to guard us from that parking lot and the effects of it. The boarding home permit has been expired and the town has substantially expanded the area around the previous house by excavation and grading and forced parking and continual traffic directly adjacent to our home, especially along the southern perimeter of our home where our bedrooms and dens are. The basement of our home is utilized as a workshop. Since the removal of the curb about a year ago, our basement has elevated humidity. And I fought 27 years ago to get that curb put on directly with the owner through two lawyers because the town of Berwick and the acting enforcement officer at that time refused to get involved as the previous owners after Newcomb, the second owners expanded continually that parking lot toward our house and nothing was ever done about it until I hired lawyers in 1992. These are the things that we're respectfully requesting. We are not against your recreation dreams and what you want to do over there. But for over a year I have been involved, I think close to two years I have been involved in the meetings trying to discuss how you are going to shield our home from water problems, which I think you should have received a video on a catch basin effect, which we're experiencing we right now where the curb was removed and it's been dug up even more. This is what we worry about. This is what I've been trying to discuss for two years and I've been getting pushed back. We had to hire a lawyer and try and communicate and work with the town and we have been pushed back. There are comments in here from the meetings that I've attended where you can see there are quotes. The selectmen, when they were pushing this project, they said that it would be recognized. There are quotes in there. There are timestamps from the meetings. It should be understandable. And I am asking you not to accept this application as it is because I don't think it was submitted properly. And. In the back of this, you have a letter from Roaring Brook Consultants, who were the ones that did my excavation. In 1992, the civil engineer here that I hired 
has a master's degree from MIT, and he outlined everything in here. As long as water, I mean, we took provisions, we put mirror drain against our foundation and excavated the whole thing. The only places it's seeping now is against the side where you've removed the curb and have graded down into us. This guy forewarned, and I didn't even catch this here, that if groundwater levels are elevated, nothing's going to stop that. And I'm not going through the process that he recommended not to do because it would not be cost effective for me. So I want you guys to take that into consideration. This letter is from 1992. The civil engineer is still in South Berwick. I don't want you to accept this application as it is. I don't think any of the stipulations from the articles in the land use ordinance have been acknowledged or worked on. You've presented essentially a draft plan of a community building and shoving parking out there that changes every day. I, I asked for close to two years that I wanted those cars removed. No one wants to discuss that with me. The cars close to our home. I think it's a simple task rather than shoving them against the westerly side of the property, your property, against ours, to keep it away from the other abutters. The town has been working effectively with the other abutter and completely ignoring us. If you want to fit more cars there, please create a reasonable setback where we would not have slamming, <coughs> thumping. People come and go to these games. They don't stay for two hours. They may come for 20 minutes, take some pictures, load some kids up. These are eight or nine percussions at a time per vehicle. It is constant and it has affected our, it has affected our life. Last week, two weeks ago, what I thought was to be an informational meeting where this application was submitted to you, that morning the town came and stripped all the buffers off of all of the vegetation off of the fence that separates us. We are now wide open. And I know that there's a discussion of a fence going on. The grading is higher. People over there are still going to see into our backyard, into our bedroom windows. I have, we have cars parked in that rut, in that catch basin, 10 feet from our house. I mean, it, it is just insolent to think that you guys would permit this to happen to us. And if you approve this, I have a recourse which is going to affect me financially, but I don't believe I should be going through this. There should be a proper process. There should be stormwater management. All the articles need to be addressed. And the lawyer did outline to you that the planning board has the authority to go above and beyond what is in these ordinances. She explained that to you. Since October 29th, legal action was until April. We kind of kicked it in gear. There was a deadline on. Something was thrown at you. I think it was too quick. It needs to be revised. We all need to negotiate what our needs are, how we can all live amicably <clears throat> together. That's yeah. what I would ask. Okay. And also one other thing. The access way of the old horseshoe driveway, that doesn't exist anymore. So now you have this one way going in. It's dangerous. I am hoping that on these plans it shows a two-way entry into there. So I'm guessing that the road's going to be even closer to our house. We don't agree with that. We think it's unacceptable. And I think you need possibly a survey. We've looked at some of the deeds to these properties. The numbers don't jive. Something's not right. So I want you guys to take that into consideration and we are respectfully asking that you read the materials that we gave you tonight. And I want you to look at the pictures and please think of them thoughtfully on you know, from our perspective. That's all we ask. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sheldon. All right. Nice
anybody else, this is a public hearing for conditional use application parking facility 71 Sullivan Street. Okay, if I see nobody else come forward, I'm going to keep the public hearing open for this. We're not going to close the public hearing this evening on this, and that's the way that I feel on this, unless anybody on the board would like to, to further discuss it, but I, I would like to leave the public hearing open. Go ahead. Thank you. Sean Goodwin, 65 Sullivan Street. Um, <clears throat> first off, as my wife had said, we certainly support the rec department and everything that's going on over there. I often enjoy watching the games from the back side of our land. <clears throat> Unfortunately, now the baseball field has put up a black top further out where we cannot enjoy watching the games. I have friends that come over that kids play, they'll stay on my side. We um, often had some good conversations with people out of town that sit up against the fence because of the shade and all that stuff, so we certainly support what's going on over there. I've had issues with the rec department, and Kim Taylor has done a great job of taking care of the issues that have come up with throwing garbage over the fence. Uh, there was one case where there was chocolate on the side of our um, land and we own a dog, so obviously that's not uh, very good. Um, the baseball folks, as I mentioned, we support the baseball and everything that goes along with it. Um, once or twice a year I have to go over to them at the main building and explain to them that they can't be jumping over our fence to get loose balls. I am always there to throw them back. <laughs> um, the feeding of the dog, oftentimes go out there, there's french fries out there, and that's just 53 feet on the back side of our land. Now we have 300 feet where we're gonna have possibly problems. But again, we support all that. The last meeting, it was mentioned that everything was copacetic and that there was mutual co cooperation between us and the town. And that's hardly the fact. And it's laughable to suggest to. This has affected us financially and more importantly, emotionally. We spent a lot of time and unneeded effort to bring forth an argument that we needed the town to do what they needed to do and we would have rode with it and sat down, discussed all the problems, setbacks, the standard requirements for fences and bushes and everything else. But there was a lack of response and kind of really no cooperation in my opinion. Um, in the 2018 November 27th minutes, Mr. Wright noted that they would have to apply for a planning board change for the use, change of use at 71 Sullivan and it's taken this long for us to reach this point. Meanwhile, as my wife had mentioned, we continue to have parking right outside my bedroom window, the noise, the traffic. Um, just three days ago, I had actually recorded an almost accident out front um, and that leads me to my next point that there's a speed problem over there, a terrible speed problem. People are flying up and down Sullivan Street. And as you all know, there's a corner up there and you come down, it can be blind at times. Um, we've seen some close calls, not only with people in the rec department coming out of there, but us backing out of our driveway, neighbor across the street, backing out of their driveway. 
that is one of the big issues I have right now is the speed and the traffic and the controls going down through there. Now I have seen, I've gone through some of these side streets here where we put up speed bumps all over the place. Speed bumps at stop signs. Speed bumps at stop signs. <clears throat> if we don't know what a stop sign is in this day and age, we're finished. That's redundant and ridiculous. I dare say we control that traffic up there with a speed bump around that corner because somebody is going to get hurt. I got a letter here from my neighbor across the street who couldn't make it tonight. He works in Boston. His name is Jong Bo Myung. He said, Dear Town of Burlington. What's his address? Uh, he's 68 Sullivan Street, directly across from us. He often has uh, lots of family over there. Um, they're of ethnic background, so they gather and have quite a few cars coming in and out of there, backing up, coming out, and um, there's small children, and not to mention the animals we have. So he says in a letter, I would like to raise some concerns surrounding the recreational field parking area at Sullivan Street. Before I begin, I want to thank the town of Berwick for providing a place where the community can come together to make friends, play, and spend time with those we care about. We are very grateful for the gift and would very much like to see this community grow. However, we do have a couple of major concerns. First, I feel that the parking area on Sullivan Street lack safety measures or enough speed enforcement. Vehicles passing by are often going too fast, which is especially dangerous around the bend go going from Pine Hill to Sullivan. Many who drive by may not be aware that they are about to pass the park and isn't looking out for pedestrian crossing the street. We are also not providing community members a safe passage crossing the street to the park. He did some quick, well, his words. I did some quick research and I've learned some things I'd like to share. Reaction time vary from person to person. But on average, it would take a person 2.3 seconds to realize they need to break for pedestrians. This means that a vehicle going 30 miles an hour would have covered 100 feet from the time the driver decides to brake to the time it takes them to move their foot from the gas pedal to the brake pedal. Going 45, the vehicle would have traveled over 150 feet or half the length of a football field, and this doesn't even account for the distance it takes to come to a complete stop. I won't be going into details for braking distance since that varies so much by vehicle, weight, tire grip, road grade, road conditions, etc., or driver distraction such as cell phones, GPS and radios, and other <coughs> means, in my opinion. Simply put, a driver coming around the bend would have passed the entrance of the field by the time they are able to come to a complete stop when breaking for an innocent child. For my second concern, it's the privacy of the residents adjacent to the park. They basically have little to no privacy without a fence. If I were in their position, this would be something I would want, so I'd like to speak on behalf if they haven't already done so. In summary, I would like to see some solutions to my concerns mentioned above. It only takes one tragic incident to turn a place we can all enjoy to a nightmare someone would need to live with for the rest of their lives. So I urge that we do the right thing by putting safety first and consider not driving any Berwick residents out of their homes. Now this is the only letter I have from him. I can have copies made up for you guys and sent out. Please do. Okay. Please send them to James. Okay, I will do so. Thank you for your time. Thank you. This is a public hearing for the conditional use application for a parking facility at 71 Sullivan Street. Feel free to come forward. 
Okay, I'm gonna, I wanna leave the um, public hearing open. I'm gonna, I wanna leave the public hearing open, okay? I, I would agree with that. I, th I think <clears throat> there are uh, some considerations that, you know, we. Which we'll get into in old business for sure, but I'm sure we wanna have another public hearing after this and we could just keep it open. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Next in old business is conditional use application medical marijuana production facility, 398 School Street. It's in the R3 zone with frontage on Route 9, applicants David Springer. I'll open it up with our town planner. Um, yes, good evening. Um, I did provide you actually. To you, but I did provide you with a supplemental uh, piece of information from the last meeting. The issue was whether or not um, the stormwater um, letter um, or analysis that was done by DH2M was complete or not um, because there had been no change to the plans um, and no formal recommendation on the um, whether or not stormwater ponds were needed uh, around the property because of drainage. Since that time, as I indicated to you at the last meeting, I did have a conversation with Steve Blake, who was the um, engineer uh, on behalf of BH2M and on behalf of the applicant, and um, to talk about why um, or if they were they going to need any stormwater ponds out there. Again, as um, a visual inspection this evening with the site walk, saw that um, the topography is such out there that um, there's really no need to be able to put any ponds in for that location. So I would suggest that the stormwater analysis that was done for you for the last meeting is complete and that the application at this point um, is ready for your discussion tonight and uh, potential vote on the application. Okay, Mr. Springer. Questions on, um, you wanna talk about the site walk? I know that I wasn't able to get there because of work. Oh, do we? <laughs> All right, we'll start off with Nicole. No, I thought the, uh, the site walk was very good. We had a few members of the public there, three of them who came and walked the site with us. We were able to see and listen to their um, complaints and observations, which was very good because uh, we were right there. We did notice, and I don't know if Dan wants to comment on that, but we did notice a building on the property that's not on the plan, so um, that was interesting to find. And uh, we did notice a little bit of marijuana odor walking. I walked around building number three and building number two, and both of them you could smell a little bit of marijuana odor there, which was one of the complaints from the abutters. So that was it. Paul? Um, I would agree with what Nicole has said. Um, in addition, to what, what struck me the most is uh, the amount of disturbed soil, and I'm, I'm sure there's uh, probably several years of history behind there, but um, I'd like to know if we've actually had a, a DEP, if that required a DEP permit, and if we have one, then I think we're clear on that one. Uh, the building at the back, the lights, I think our code enforcement uh, has uh, started a process where uh, this is spring is going to be shining them down instead of over at the neighbor's windows. And I'd like to see before an occupancy permit on building five that those are all done. Uh, otherwise, they may just languish for, for a while. And I feel the same about the filters. If most of the other, the buildings one through four don't have filters, uh, I'd like to be sure those filters are in before an occupancy permit is um, given. And I think the other thing just um, I forgot to mention was behind building number five, the lack of buffer. I think we all noticed that. Yeah. there It was pretty bare. The, the side line right here? Um, behind number five. <coughs> the one that, with the one that they're, oh, back here. that he's yeah. trying to get approved. So that was. Niles? All right, and we discussed the buffer issue and Mr. Springer said he would work to do something. Uh, and I agree there's, some work that needs to be done on the lighting. Um, uh, and I'm assuming we can have discussions with you. Mrs. Hughes at least uh, has some lighting issues and I know you talked about changing the angle or yeah, that's 
I think that needs to be done. No? No. Um, in terms of uh, what we saw today, um, the lights were the only issue that, that really stood out to me and the, the barrier between the building five and the abutting property. <clears throat> it's, you know, it's pretty wide open. Um, nobody's complained yet, but, you know, there's might be new owners down the line that might feel differently. So it might be something to look into. Um, in terms of a smell, nothing that I noticed, but, you know, everybody's a little bit different on that. So in the public hearing, we did have two complaints about the lights and the odor. So this isn't an opportunity. No, Mr. Springer, so can you talk about the lights and the odor? Because th those were the two things. Those are the two concerns. Yeah, that's not an issue. Uh, I talked to Dan already. We put shades on one of the lights that we had installed, and we did pick up four others. <coughs> shaded just for the glare. The light that's the uh, problem child is the one flood that might be, it's, we all looked at it. It's shining one side of the building. It could be going through the woods. There's no leaves right now, whatnot. But we can readjust that one light. That one flood's the only light. All the other light fixtures are wall packs that shine directly down that are required on the building. What type of flood is it? This is like a, uh, just like a adjustable flood head. Uh, you could point it like a flagpole light. You know, something that you could direct, point wherever you need it. So we just, we just thought we'd just redirect it. So uh, as a condition of approval, <clears throat> all the lights would have to be facing down, you know, shielded. Yes. All, the, all the lights. Most, most of the lights are pointing away from Route 9, not towards anything. They're shining it's, for areas to, you know, for security. It's dark sky compliant, though. It has to be dark sky compliant, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that, so as a condition of approval, they would all have to be that way. Now, if... if if your abutters had issues with that, you need to go to the code enforcement officer to have the code enforcement officer enforce that after the approval. Dan is the code enforcement officer for the town. So as a condition of approval, he would ha all these lights would have to be dark sky compliant. If they still are not, and it's still, you don't, if you don't think that it's not, then you have to go to the code enforcement officer, to Dan and make that known to him and then he'll go out there at night and he'll take a look <laughs> and he'll contact That's what he does he'll contact <laughs> Mr. Springer and let him know we have complained many a times about it when they say they're going to do it then nothing's been done because you're going to the wrong person <laughs> you're going well, to can, can well, we ask Dan yeah. have you looked at the lights that are already out there and are they in compliance right now I have looked at the lights and I don't feel they're in compliance all right, so what can we do about it? Well, the ordinance states under uh, 7.4, the last part of this paragraph is, lighting fixtures shall be shielded or hooded so that the lighting elements are not exposed to normal view by motorists, pedestrians, or from adjacent dwellings. Direct or indirect illumination shall not exceed 0 0.5 foot candles upon abutting residential property. And that's all lights, including the ones on the building itself? That's all the lights in town. Okay, so do you? Yeah. So you've, you've talked to Mr. Springer before about the lights. We talked to the code enforcement system before. It's not him. It's the other one. Okay. Okay, we've talk, had meetings about it. <coughs> and nothing was done. I have received uh, one or two complaints on lighting. Uh, in the context of that, with Mr. Springer, we've discussed the lighting, and I've explained to him that in the future, there'll be no more approvals unless the lighting is complete and code compliant. Okay. And, and that's as to all of the buildings, not just to building five. That's whatever light is on the property. Wall right, lights, we whole lamps. So you will need to bring the existing buildings into compliance in order f for building five to be approved. To get their certificate of occupancy, correct? Correct. Okay. So he can't even get in there unless the lights are in compliance. Oh, but well, can, can we add, you have been out there, Dan? Yes. Your views on compliance, the smell compliance with town ordinance? I, I was in back of uh, two of the buildings 
uh, on this day, and I've been around the buildings on other occasions, and uh, I have not had a smell that was obtrusive. So you, you believe they're in compliance? I do. The, the four existing buildings? Yes. Okay. But that was at this time. So if there's an operation going on and the back doors are open, it could be a different situation. How about the humidity and the heat of the summer? And especially, uh, I mean, all the new operations that are starting up have filters. And yes. I'm wondering if every building does have operating filters. Yeah, they're supposed to have filters. I mean, you know. Well, do they or don't? Do we know if well, they? That's what I'm saying. They were, they were supposed to all, all have filters. I believe they do because it was a, there was an odor before. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not denying that. No, I mean, they're all supposed to have filters. To well, that's going uh, uh, to, I know, I we're not, we can't, I, I know, we're trying to. Uh, we're you know, that's what I'm saying is there was a smell before where. It's okay. There's, there's okay. not a smell now. As a condition of approval, all the build now because you're putting that fifth building into play, all the buildings have to conform by that order control ordinance and you have to have filtration on them. Yeah. So you have to get in there and see your tenants, right. whether or not they have that on there before. Yeah, that's not a problem. And our ordinance makes it your problem, Absolutely. not the tenant's problem. Yeah. 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 So with I have seen all of them, but I'm, I mean, probably not everyone directly, but I will. So the code enforcement officer, before he gives them a certificate of occupancy, is going to inspect all five of the buildings to make sure that they have odor control filtration systems on that and that they conform to the land use ordinance. Otherwise, he's not going to sign off on it. And you agree to that? Yeah, I'll agree to that. Okay. There's a building that they have oil in there. You can smell the oil. We walked around, Nicole and that. Others, and we could smell that oil? I, I think what was happening is there were there was a lot of people, several people on the property, and a lot of the doors were being They're opened opening, and closed. Yeah. And and I really think that oh. while you guys, somebody was on the uh, in another building, when the door opened, you cut a very slight whiff. Um, I wouldn't find it objectionable, but I think I have heard on hot days, it's a lot stronger smelling, and I could be off on that. I don't live in the neighborhood there. Uh, So I, I, if the, all the filters are operating, you know, you probably won't be able to, and the doors open up, you're probably going to get some whiffs, I would imagine. Well, they don't operate when the doors open. Yeah, doors I, I know, but they go in and out. You know, I mean, they're normally closed. Out, doors aren't open, On number two, conditions of approval, I would recommend a change. The applicant s shall ensure that all lighting installed on the buildings, this says building, yeah. it's got to include all five. Not a problem. Can, so how would we word that? Uh, it would say the applicant shall ensure, insel, shall ensure that all lighting installed on the buildings and poles are dark sky compliant with cutoff fixtures to prevent light trespass on neighbor's property. Okay, so we can- about on property? Can, can, I, can I suggest that we change it to uh, installed on the site, including the buildings and the poles? Yeah, I like that better in case there's some other location somewhere that's going to have a light? Some of the crazy light out there yeah. that we don't know about. <laughs> Stranger things that again? Yeah. On the site, comma, including buildings and poles. Well, let's get really annoying and do including, but not limited <laughs> to buildings and poles. So there is no, or at least the loopholes getting smaller and smaller. Wait, are you, are you an attorney? Are <laughs> you an attorney in your private you know, life? I, I play one on TV. <laughs> your Esquire is showing. <laughs> he is. And Lee J, the other thing that I would, I would uh, want to make sure of, am I getting too far ahead of you? Nope. Number three, this certificate of occupancy shall not be issued until the CEO has made a determination that all requirements, including the odor control filters, have been installed. It, it, this leaves it to just be one building. Can we make this to be that it's all buildings? Yes, and I'll make another change and not only say have been installed. But and then we'll let Niles go with his and version of it. Yeah. yeah, and operate. Okay. That's enough for me. How about including odor, odor control filters and light lighting? Well, the lighting Should we, is above since it. Since it's above the it, we're The lighting's not gonna, above okay. that. All right. But the COs are contingent Does on that. that makes sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. Good. That'd be fine. So we're good with that. 
Oh, yeah. All the yeah. lights, every single light that you have outside, and yeah. every building with odor control. So you're gonna have to, I guess you're gonna have to get in there with with Dan and and ins make sure that these are all installed. Absolutely. Anybody else see anything on the conditions or uh, I've oh, got one. Got, I've got yeah. two things actually. One is what uh, Nicole mentioned about there. The plant is not depicting yeah. what is on the ground on the site. There is a building in the back and and I didn't walk the whole site. It could even be another one. Yeah. But I would like to see a plan that, you know, once this thing is approved, shows what's on the site. Yeah, because that, that building is within that building is within setback lines. It's, it may be right on the edge. Yeah. Yeah, um, that was an existing building too. You didn't yeah. hear that from Jack. Well, it, it, it'd be nice to know when that thing when that building yeah. was put up. But it certainly is an active use right now. And the other thing is, I still like to be sure that. There's been so much dirt moved in there. It's not unlike one that we're reviewing somewhere else right now that, you know, it was properly done. And I've seen where there's gravel that are just, you know, it's basically four feet above the uh, uh, underlying land. Um, I, you know, I'd like to know when that gravel was moved and if it was done properly. Um, to me, that's, there's been a lot of work on that site. Yeah, I'm interested in the DEP permit for the disturbed soil as well. Yeah. So I can answer that for you. Um, one, um, any stormwater requirements or disturbed soil with DEP would be a minimum of three acres. And they, according to the plans that we have, it's been a little under three acres, so they would not re be required to go to DEP for any permit. Um, I also confirmed that with my conversation with PH2M to make sure that I wasn't missing anything there as well. And they confirmed that from their visual and everything else that they've seen on the plans that they were not at the three acres which would require DEP. Can I ask if the if the soil engineer you're talking with, is that an independent soil engineer or is it uh, the applicant's soil engineer? He was retained by the applicant to do the stormwater only after we acquired the DEP stormwater. But he calculated how much area was disturbed, at I least he he did. BJ, can you add a condition about the buffer? Um, uh, Mr. Springer, no read to do that. Need to add additional buffer. I, and I, of course, beef the wording up, but need to add additional buffer behind Building 5. Other questions, comments? Mr. Chairman, can we uh, define additional buffer in the back of the building? Like a row of arbor well, would, is probably, or a fence? When I write this up, it would probably be two rows of arbor is no less than six yeah. feet in height, you know, with separation in the rows of five feet, and there are certain standards for buffering that I would Does that make sense? Yeah, that'd be fine. That's great. Come back in two weeks. Yep. Um, but in that time, can you yes, two and, weeks. and Dan get together on the, the questions the of the, the lighting and the filters to make yeah. sure that the filters in the four existing buildings as well? And then report back to us at our next meeting. Yes, sir. So the 16th? The 16th, I can do. Okay. Then you're in June. Then the uh, No, we don't. We only meet the first and the third. We don't. Thursday. We don't meet. So it'll be the sixth of the twentieth of June. Yeah, sixth. Sixth. You can yeah. do the sixth of June. Let's do that. And have that extra building on the plan. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Next on the agenda, an old business is conditional use application yeah. parking Thank facility. You. 71 Sullivan Street map, U3, lot 11, CI zone, applicant is town of Berwick. So I think it's my recommendation to the applicant 
which is the town of Berwick. Until this application is approved, I think that we should cease use of that property for right now. I agree. Because that would be my recommendation because it's not an approved use right now and I think it sets a bad precedent and I think that if we've actually had an application here within mm -hmm. the last three months where we had to have the code enforcement officer give them a cease operation because they were operating something that was not permitted yet. That would be my recommendation I think would be until we can kind of finally figure every this whole thing out. There's a parking for the field on like the other side, right? Yeah, it's just not Correct. Ad adequate at the moment. Correct. And first of all, th this this board here is not the town of Berwick. This isn't our field. This isn't our parking lot. We're not pushing for this. Um, I just want to clarify that. We're just making sure that we're all <laughs> going down the right way here. And the only reason that I think it did come up, and I didn't even think about it, until you filed paperwork with your lawyer, I didn't get your email back on October. Well, you don't have to come up here. I'm just saying. I'm just. I'm just speaking. I didn't. I'm not going to talk from the back of the room. I'm just stating something. October, I didn't get an email, but in in April, I was aware of some pending possible litigation, and that's and then it made sense, and then it dawned on me, and I said, well, yeah, that makes sense. It's actually that lot is a boarding house and it's owned for a boarding house right now so that that's all I have to say I think that, you're absolutely so. right about that you're absolutely right we went on that site walk at that other place and they had to shut down their operation because they were using it without the right permit I hate right? to see losing the parking lot for right now but until we can come to a decision here because it could get it, I, I don't know I'll open it and? up to you what law are you speak, speaking of no. pardon me no <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes. yeah. yeah. Yes. Just a second, Tom. Just a second. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I if they are, <coughs> excuse me, if they are in fact using it um, today, I mean, I don't know the full history of if that was not being used publicly or not, but certainly if they're, um, you know, they're looking to put the parking lot out there that um, is at least on the plan that was submitted. And it's not that way, then um, really they probably should not be using that parking lot until we get the approvals. Um, and then whatever there has been a, a video submitted that shows pretty clearly it is being used as a parking lot. So that that site was used for up to 22 cars, I believe, Correct. at one point. And I don't know the, the video. I looked at that also, and it seems to be a lot more than 22 cars, but. Um, but I'm wondering, from a code enforcement point of view, if 22 cars could still be parked in there while we're trying to figure out what's going on, I'd be more worried about water getting into well, that cellar. Once the building was destroyed, what does that do to the existing Thank condition? Thank you so much. That's, mm -hmm. I know we've been over this <laughs> Well, again, I, I mean, a part of that, I and I don't have that history, is was, was parking for that property ever ceased, whether the building was torn down or not? Um, parking is a use that that is allowed, or public facility is a use that's allowed there. Um, if, of course, it's approved, but if parking was being um, utilized on that property prior to, and there was never a like a um, uh, one year where it wasn't used for parking, taking any nonconformity or whatnot, and, and disallowing any future use, then. You know, parking to the extent of which was previously used could continue. Any expansion of that clearly needs to come back to this mm -hmm. board for approval um, and any other improvements that are going to need to go along with that. All right, Mr. Wright. I, I guess I'm representative of the owners. <laughs> Just state <laughs> your name for the record. Tom, Tom Wright, Cemetery <laughs> Road Broward, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen. Um, it, this is an issue that has been discussed from the beginning. Um, as far as the use of the parking lot, is, uh, we were advised by previous planners, previous code enforcement, that we could continue with that. However, as Ms. Sheldon had mentioned last fall, I did say that we needed to come before the planning board for a change of use. Um, is we have started that process. 
And I agree with you. I think that we are behind the eight ball here. We didn't do our due diligence, and I suggest that we stop using that parking lot until we do pass it. Is because of these issues. Is um, I had hoped to get this resolved before baseball season, but things started late. Is uh, other issues came up, and it kind of put got put on the back burner. Is the um, <clears throat> You know, some of the things that were addressed earlier is uh, about uh, impervious surfaces. By removing the building in the parking lot, existing parking lot, we removed impervious surfaces, improving drainage. Um, as far as cutting the brush and screens, that had been talked about from the beginning. The wooden fence that was there was falling down. Is when the town crew was out doing the trimming work, is I believe. Mr. Sheldon was there and spoke with the town crew at the time, and there was no issue at that time. But I agree that we didn't do our due diligence and that you know, until we get this approved and done properly is that we should cease using the parking lot. Can we add one more thing to that? And, and to me, if I were living next door to that parking lot, um, I'd be worried if my foundation was seeing more water and if you, we've removed some kind of a, a buffer or uh, there was something stopping the whatever water was not going into the permeability of the soil, if that's been washing on across the property line because that uh, whatever was a concrete or something that is that. I, I don't believe I don't believe it's surface water that's washing across that. Yeah. It, it, you know, it, my understanding was that it, it's coming from underground, and uh, as as I said, is removing the the existing pavement and building should have improved the. Soil. Or maybe letting but the what water. We've what, learned, it, what, what we've learned on the planning board is that <laughs> yeah. gravel, even though it's, it, it is a, a per, it's permeable. It's partially yes. permeable. Yes, it's it is. It's partially permeable. It That's is. what it is. It's yeah. not impervious. It is not because I, I. Completely permeable. I honestly <laughs> believe. Now look, first of all, problem. Yeah. Well, well, first of all, like, uh, th yes, this snuck up on, especially me, like I don't drive around town looking at lots and say that's an unauthorized use, that's an unauthorized <laughs> use until it was actually brought to attention and then it, now it does make sense. But I know that that lot, the characteristics of the, the, the geography of that lot has changed. It has. Yeah, for the better. <laughs> I would say well, I mean, no, I'm talking, but yes, the building's down, but I'm saying that the ground has changed. And, maybe and be something... putting more water in the ground. Remember, we might, we might remember be. when Les Bodwell was over here and you were worried about your groundwater being affected by him cutting things down and now... No, the... I wasn't worried about my groundwater. Oh. I was worried about well water and oh, okay. what right, right. wells we're going to do to the surrounding right. wells. I think, right. I think... Same. Tom, is there any way, and I hate to have the town spend uh, money on this, but th obviously there's an abutter who's got some issues and it could get a lot worse monetarily wise, but I think we need to hire an engineer to look at that. Coming out of the planning department budget? Sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we need more well, than that. I mean, is there, <laughs> a, is there, a, is there, no, I, I, I honestly. I, I understand. Because you look at the, there's even drainage issues down at the other, uh, down at the other uh, parking lot. It, it, that, I, that parking I, lot's I horrible down yeah. there. I understand, yeah. and, and I fully expect that our final plan that we bring forward will meet all the compliances that the planning board and the land use ordinance require. You know, I, I have no doubt that that will be. Just uh, to get, just so we know, hey, it, it's not this lot that's actually causing their issues or it is their lot, it is this lot that's causing the issues. Yeah. Yeah. So. Because I think it's just gonna continue to snowball. And I'm glad you came to the meeting they're, they're not listening to me right now. They're over there. I'm glad that they came. I'm glad that you came to the public hearing tonight, and I'm glad that you provided all these things for us. But it, it, I think that we need to. I think that we might need to take a little bit of a step back and have uh, an engineer look at this. And, and, and to address one other issue, you know, the, the the speed along Sullivan Street is. We know there's a problem with speed everywhere in town. When we had the the. Uh, traffic study meeting here last week is uh, the, the question came up about the speed on Sullivan Street and Rochester Street and the chief of police said that from their data they've been collecting with their, their radar sign is that 
The speed on those roads may be a couple of miles over the posted speed limit, but it's not outrageous. Is you're always going to get somebody speeding through town, no matter what you do. Is we have them speeding past here. Is that a 35 or 25? 25. I believe it's 25. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think that. Going through there at least 50. No, I've seen it before too. I think not not as necessary. Not as necessary. Yeah, I don't think as as a uh, this isn't going to trigger a traffic study or anything. And, and also, I, I think maybe something that public works and, and through the town manager, we we need to put up additional signage there too, to to, to alert people that there's a park there or crosswalk because there's not enough signage there. There's no crosswalk. But the only so. crosswalk is down by um, Rollins Road. Correct. So. Down by where they yeah. want to turn yeah. it into. And where they want there's, to a, there's a dysfunctional school crossing sign still there. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> when, when you go by any school in Berwick, even on vacation weeks, there's a blinking yellow light 15 miles an hour. Yeah. And I'll bet you there's more traffic in and out of that place when there's a, games, a yeah. bunch of games going on. Yeah. And, you know, it may warrant something like that. You know, when there's a game, somebody triggers that blinking yellow light and it's 15 miles an hour. That would and that would slow down the traffic for the stop sign. Let's just take that sign and move it, the blinking sign and move it, <laughs> because it does go from 35 to 25 right away. But you could. What, what is, what's your, what's the plan? What are we going to do? I'm also going to bring up one more time, like I brought up last last meeting, that I think it should be surveyed, especially if you're going to have engineering done. And we know what happened with the riverfront, and it's it happened on my own property. You, you don't know what's there unless you know where all four pins are and you've flagged them and located them. Seven pins. Whatever it is. Well, we've had a, it, there, there's a be, question. There was a question about that tonight easier, too. It'll be a lot cheaper to survey it then if they're there. So. It does say on the on the the, the 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 outline plan or whatever. It does say survey necessary. Yeah, but so. they weren't planning on having it done. Ne and, necessary and, 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 and. If I can just address that plan, is, is I I didn't know that original plan was going to be shown to you. That was mm -hmm. a concept plan for future use and possibly a community center. There is no immediate plans for any community center right. there because we right. don't have any money. Yeah. It, all we're looking for is parking lot. Yep. So we need a plan with just the parking lot. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, so we're going to, we're not gonna act on this tonight. Uh, no, I didn't, but I'll entertain a, a question. I'll give you, I, I'll give you three minutes. You know, there's, you know, a lot of discussion about the smell of marijuana and forcing filter systems into these businesses now, but I can't get anybody's attention about people backing up to the property line and gassing up their vehicles and leaving them running and warming them. You know, uh, we have our windows open. We would like to leave them open, and we have noxious fumes coming through. We have lights at night um, going through our yard uh, when they start their cars. The lights are shining into our home 15 feet away. So, you know, I have not mentioned, as my husband talked about the, the problems with trash, et cetera, from the field. Some of that is expected, but I didn't bring in, I failed to send you samples of doorknobs that I found in the yard, rocks this size. I can present those things. The only thing we're asking is to try and keep our home habitable and somewhat liv livable. And um, I think I'm beyond accepting the fact that, um, you know, this has been going on for two years. I've been trying to have this discussion, and only now I can get somebody's attention. But after a substandard application was submitted, and also I tried to connect with the existing uh, code enforcement officer almost a year ago today by certified mail. Prior to that, with multiple emails, Mark Ehrenberg contacted the town manager when that guy failed to ever respond to the conditional use permit. I believe that's mentioned in the documents that I gave you. So okay, what I'm going to tell you is that we're not acting on this tonight. We're keeping yeah. the public hearing open. We're asking the town of Berwick to come back with a complete set of plans that, it, that, that addresses the, the changes in that lot. Okay. We also would like to see the fencing. We can discuss setbacks. We're going to have a site walk. We're going to have another public comment session. <coughs> you, can come, you can look at the complete plans. You can look at where the fences are if they're not, and if, if you don't like where the setbacks are from them. It will address all of that. That's why we're not acting on yeah, this tonight. Well, okay. And also, unless 
process. My memory is not as good as it used to be. Didn't the town agree to stop using this apartment? Yeah. They immediately? Yeah, they're gonna, I I they're gonna that. cease immediately until this all goes through the way it's supposed to. And so that's a rather hopefully that'll help important you guys a bit. feature, I would think, of tonight's discussion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it will so I'm if sorry to the people that are using it now, but unfortunately I don't think it's their fault that that's happened. Well and and the, and the town has agreed that it has not done its due diligence and now it will. <coughs> Thank so it will cease being a parking lot and proper plans will be submitted in due course. But until then, there should be nobody parking on that lot. Okay. Thanks. Even 22 cars, Niles? Yeah, that's what I heard 22 the, cars. The, that's what I heard the town say, so we don't need to discuss what is allowable. Yeah. I heard the chairman <laughs> of the Board of Selectmen said, say the town will not use it as a parking lot no, I I effective that. immediately. <laughs> <coughs> well, then we have a different issue, don't we? As far as I'm concerned, you put the cards and tape across. That's my, that's not my, my choice alone. Mr. Town Manager, would you like to weigh in on this thing right now? <clears throat> One more thing. I appreciate the offer for a civil engineer to look into this. If it was um, somebody that wasn't already connected with the town, that would be great. Uh, but I really like that idea and appreciate that idea, and I hope that you produce that. I would appreciate that. Town Manager, Steve Elton. Good evening. Um, just to address some issues about <coughs> brush being cut down, trees being cut down. Trees were cut down at the request of her husband. My foreman came over and said he had taken down some trees, and I said, who's worthy? <coughs> he said, there's. And he had asked, he was out there that day, and he asked him to take him down. So my public works crew did a courtesy and took it down. We killed a lot of poison ivy all along the fence. Um, and the intent was once we got them all <coughs> taken care of, we would put up a fence higher than eight feet so it would block out any usage of lights coming into their house. Um, but that hasn't been spoken about tonight. Um, originally, that parking lot for the sober home was used, and it had quite a few parking spaces. I didn't expect that we'd have 30-plus cars there. It's very seasonal. Um, right now, they're in the middle of baseball season. Um, and if I close that off, all those cars are going to go down to Sweetser Street, and now we're going to get complaints from the people that live in that development because of that. And that's been going on in this town for years. Um, and there's no remedy to that. So you're going to satisfy several homeowners, which is great, but you're going to also make a lot of other homeowners extremely upset because now they may not be able to get into their driveways because people will park everywhere. And yes, that's an enforcement issue, but uh, it's not going to be pretty. Just thought I'd tell you. So we will fence it off if that's what my board tells me to do. Um, I'll do a poll. Uh, tomorrow, and uh, I'm sure that they will agree to block it off, but there will be consequences. I will make it very difficult to have all these people uh, who have watched their children play baseball, grandparents, you name it. I was up there the other night. The parking lot on Sweetser Street was totally full. We had it all laid out, arranged, so we get the maximum amount of cars there. It was done very well. Um, we did the same thing up on uh, that piece of property so cars weren't just parked every which way, which is what how it started, and we tried to remedy that. But um, we're in the process of trying to fix it. That's all we're trying to do. So Both. it's manageable, safe, and attractive. And it's only during the warm season, which mm -hmm. uh, still isn't here yet, um, uh, Used. The layout of the parking lot for Sober Home was much different mm -hmm. than how it's laid out yes, right it now over there. Yep. So there may have been 22 spots, but they were all facing the Sober Home, and I think on either side of it. I'm sure we can look up well, some Google facing, satellite they images. Facing, they but the it fence. was a lot different. Right, they were facing the fence, and people and weren't. Fence was half of it was down because it was rotting. They weren't, it wasn't facing their fence. It was facing the fence where the ball oh, yes, field it is. Yeah, it was. It was, it was really? Oh, I don't, I don't recall that. The pavement is still there. Okay, I didn't know there was, it was lined right there facing their fence. Yeah, it was. It was yeah. the dumpster and then parking spaces. 
I'll have to look up some old satellite images. If we pull the history on that, you will find out that it was first permitted for 22 spaces and then it was reduced to about 17 residents, which they equated to like 11 cars or something like that. And I wrote about that. Yeah. There should be documents about it. Melanson came back to a couple of meetings and it was discussed in here. I'm sure we could pull the file. We could pull the file so we, we can get all that. Please, yeah, please. we can. <clears throat> My other question is about um, like an MDOT permit. Since the entrances are changing there, does, is the, does the driveway permit or curb cut or anything like that change? I don't think so. Or if they, since it's like one, since there's only one inlet instead of a one, an in and an out, does that doesn't the traffic circulation? Is there an MDOT is permit? The, the, is there? Um, I mean, I don't know. The second entrance did not Street? belong to that property. Okay. The, the second entrance actually goes with uh, Martha Lafayette's tra trailer on the north side of that property. Right, but it was always and, used and, for and that property. When people started utilizing the parking lot, they came through there and the town moved to block that off. So yeah. that's their private driveway entrance now. And um, no, we have no immediate plans to change okay. the entrance as it is. I guess it would be very helpful to see the old and, file from the old approval, really. As far as an MDOT, that's a town road, not a I don't, state road. Yeah, I don't know, so, so I need to be educated be, on that. Know, so it's the to town. You guys. How many spots did you design that lot for presently? I didn't design it. I, I have that. no an idea. Well, Steve, it, it, Steve it, said it was, it was, no it was. There was no design. It was for for the, the way it's existed now, you mean, Niles? Yes. You said that you have rearranged the lot to fix, it, it, to, what, uh, to allow a, 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 the maximum number of cars. How many cars is that that you allow in there? We don't have a, a maximum. We, all we want to do is prevent people from parking every which way to get the to keep, keep them off the grass, to keep them off the grass, and keep them on the gravel part. As we took the granite curb, the granite foundation blocks and placed them around so people can't drive on the grass. Look now. at this sat the no, satellite image. There's no image. official layout of a parking lot or mm -hmm. anything now. See how people the were proposals for 51 mm -hmm. spaces. Yeah, if you could, that's what we yeah. yeah. If you get rid of these, just get rid of those cars there. Yeah. Have nobody point. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> and put right. everybody up. Next on the agenda is major subdivision Old Sanford Road, sure. map R41, lot 16, AP zone. Curtis is the applicant. <clears throat> Mr. Town Planner. Additional memo on this project. The applicant had submitted a revised plan based on uh, the recommendations from the last memo, uh, which included such things as uh, locating the 100 foot buffer around the test pits in order to uh, show the separation between septic systems and any well locations on the site. Plan be revised to add, add a, should be a note indicating that each lot shall comply with main DEP best management practices for erosion control and for the building permit, show the erosion control measures proposed prior to the issuance of the building permit for each lot, plan be revised to show proper erosion control measures for the construction of the road, plan be revised to show the waivers as approved in a note on the plan as well as a separate note for the conditions of approval plan be revised to show a net residential acreage density calculation on the property and the plans have been revised and submitted with all of those changes. Great. Except for the fact that the discussion on the minor versus major subject. Line for Lance Van. Uh, Nick Curtis, 206 Old Sanford Road. Um, yep. I guess we put what we thought we needed to put on the plan. Um, just hoping to try to get site walk and public hearing today. Um, 
Questions for the applicant? You're making a face, Niles. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> okay. It's just been a long day. Yeah. Questions? Nope. Everything looks good. Just try to go a little faster. You guys are running behind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if there's no questions, then this application has been um, found complete. So tonight we would have a few uh, votes here. <coughs> we'll vote on the findings of fact, uh, conditions of approval, and then finally application complete. No public hearing? Oh, are we doing, are we, yes. Or a site walk, are we going to do it? <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. We have too many applications here. I'm like, <laughs> I know it's like. Hey, when I'm dealing with I'm like, towns, I'm like, I know. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> um, I want to say, if you may, hold on a second here. Or did we? Wait, I think we should have a public hearing. At least a public right. hearing. Because, right. Yeah. I mean, is there a site walk even possible? Is it just going up to see a bunch of woods at this point? That would be. Yeah, I mean, at least a public hearing, right? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, there is a couple neighbors. Other than that, it's yeah. all woods. Yeah, yeah. If that proposed driveway was there, then, yeah, there'd be something to go down. <coughs> the 16th for a public hearing. Where's James? Oh, there he is. He's hiding. Good, Good James? Okay. <laughs> Do a public hearing on the 16th. Do, are we, do you want to do a yeah. site walk or are we good? I, Apparently there's nothing to walk. Yeah. Yeah. So when I go for a walk in well, the I mean, woods. You, you, what you do is you look at the terrain and see does it kind of conform to the, they've given us topography. You know, there's a lot of wet soils here. There's a brook on it. So that's what I was looking for, Mr. Chairman. Just as a note for you, under preliminary plan approval for major subdivisions, under 7.1 G, um, and I knew I saw this wording in here. It says, if the board decides to hold a public hearing, mm -hmm. you're not required to hold a public hearing. So that's certainly your choice. I just mm -hmm. want to throw that back out there because of the discussion whether to hold it or not. Mm -hmm. I think we should. They, it looks like there's houses um, yeah, there's, there's right there's behind one, one where these by lots are. A ways away. Like if you look at, 22, there's a house there, there, there's a lot proposed mm -hmm. there, a house there, a lot proposed Newer there. Yeah, that looks pretty open. This yeah, one's already we've done, built. we've gone no, down this that road before, yeah. On here, yeah. this is oh. shown as part of the plan. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, All four, right, so five. the 16th. Yep. 16th, probably. Right. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Thank, right. you. Thank you. Have to wait all that time and... Guys. It was riveting, though, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, conditional... Oh, let me make sure here. Conditional use application. <laughs> Medical uh -huh. marijuana storefront, 357 <laughs> Portland Street. Map R70. Lot 12-1, it's in the RCI zone, the applicant's paper, Birch Property, LLC. Mr. Town Planner. Yes, you have received in front of you this evening a letter from the uh, Chief of Police, which indicated that they would prefer not to have as much landscaping and buffering there as you would choose to have <laughs> for security purposes. Um, and I think that was the only thing in this application you were waiting for for you to take action on that application. That's it. But we need a public hearing on that one, don't we? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah was, we have not done a public hearing. Scratch, no. Yeah, we have not Hold done a public second. hearing on that. Yeah. Because you, yeah. you consider you wanted to consider this a new application, yeah. not an amendment to the previous approval. So, right. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, they deserve to have another public hearing on it. The there was also hearing. some concern about the uh, security procedures, which are now have been added into the thing. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> do you have anything? I do. Um, Jeff Oliva, civil consultant. Here, um, as Lee J mentioned, we have uh, that letter that I think you folks yep. all have from the uh, police chief indicating um, our desire to look at that waiver request. And then also at the uh, information at the last meeting, the board asked for additional clarification. Um, I want to make, make sure that there is no lab, there is no kitchen in this building. Um, we provided information about how the access is gains to the building for that and then also uh, information on the site and the updated narrative with that uh, request that came from the last meeting. Um, I think we have a full application now, and uh, we look forward to the public hearing.
Did we vote this application complete? I think it was only a given. Do you remember? Once. Oh, James? I don't think so. Let's no. refer to the minutes. Cheap, cheap mm -hmm. That's what we were waiting yeah, on. Yeah, you're right. We didn't vote it complete, did we? Okay. This, oh, was no. the only, this was the only thing that oh, we, no, we yeah, asked that for, and here it is. So, so the motion will be for application complete. Okay. And make, uh, before we move on to a complete application and setting the public hearing, um, I, I'd like to comment on, and I did before in the original plan, on the tree line, especially with the houses on Blackberry Hill Road. And what I see here on the conceptual drawing given to us, I see shrubbery in front or on the side of the building and I'll tell you, if I were going to be uh, breaking into this building, I would hide behind one of these bushes. <laughs> Which she's not. <laughs> Instead of a nice hardwood tree. <laughs> 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 so that I'm saying again? About it, might get I said, yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, but, but I mean, I mean, you know, the way I see the application, everyone's saying, cut all the trees, cut all the trees. You know, there's there's a lot of trees that can be left. Oh, there will be, be a lot. There will be a lot of trees okay. that will be left. And We're talking about the, the ones that are not by like the doors, entryways, exactly. parking I think areas. That's the idea is that we, I mean, except for on that with, one with side. the exception of the area for the driveway where the septic system goes and where the building, mm. the rest of the whole property is tree. Yeah. So it's just that area that it talks about ordinance in the front of the of the property, and I think that's where the police chief comes through, where they can do patrols, they can see the building. Yeah. That's the area. That's the only area we're talking no about. No problems Everything in the front. The I'm thinking about the west side it. line. Yeah, and that west side line stays all the same. That's perfect. Yeah, so it's just those waivers for the landscaping yes. and the yeah, parking lot. Yeah, as we lot. talked about, it was the la uh, landscaping in yeah. this area in the front between the building and the road. It's good with the police. It's good with me. Did you have anything, Lee J? I was just going to suggest in order to short circuit that issue that if you're going to have a sidewalk that it certainly can be discussed at that we have walked Well, we've already well, done we a sidewalk there. I think we <laughs> yeah. the last time we were not going to have a side sidewalk. Right. We're not All right, so the motion would be for, to, for the application to be complete. So moved. I'll second that. All right. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right. All in favor? Okay. Um, so we will schedule the public hearing for the 16th. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. We're almost done. Crank We're busy 16th. Him. Almost done. Crank him. So. Next on the agenda is new business, conditional use application, public facility, fire department, 20 Wilson Street, map U4, lot 142-1. The applicant is the town of Berwick. What's the date on this one? Is that the original one? Yeah, this is the original one. Hollywood? Right, but the, the easements all stay. But I know the, the land between this easement yeah. and the next it's lot the chairs, going yeah. down to town. Be, Frank before Tan, he gives his presentation, to I would like to speak but on this as the owner's representative again, I guess. It doesn't delete easements. All right, that's true. You guys listening? Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, they don't care. Tom's about to talk. Oh. <laughs> well, we shall pay attention. <laughs> oh, believe me. It, I, I'm going to give a brief history of how we got to where we are. I think it's important for to put this all on public record all at once and get it all in one place. Yeah, it's been discussed a lot over the last several years about what we're thinking of doing and how we got there. Yeah, but um, I'm Tom Wright, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen. Um, I'm here to talk about building a new fire station and improvements to the police station. Uh, the present fire station was built in 1967. It is, um, it's actually on the site of the previous town hall. Before this town hall was built, that's where the town hall was. Um, and actually, this room here was where the fire station was afterwards. Um, over the last 10 years, uh, the town has spent approximately half a million dollars on improvements, repairs, maintenance, mold remediation on the existing fire station. Uh, we, the fire department knew that we needed more space, so they did a study. As uh, Captain Sam Tibbetts did quite an extensive study looking at the number of calls, where they're coming from, and future growth. As most of the growth in calls were out on the Pine Hill Road, Little River Road, Cranberry Meadow Road area. As 
They identified, the fire department identified several parcels along Pine Hill Road. And we, um, after further investigation, we found they're either unavailable or um, rejected as not being suitable for our station. <coughs> There's the Cemetery Association offered six acres up on Cemetery Road across from the chapel for $89,000. As that was, uh, we took a quick walk about the site. It seemed like a presentable site. The fire department didn't have a problem with it. But during the interim, it was suggested that the town look at putting the station at the Estabrook School site. As <coughs> we had many discussions at our selectmen's meetings over this. It's been talked about numerous times. <coughs> As we held a public hearing last fall over the proposal is we talked about the new fire station and police improvements, but most of the public hearing focused on the site that we were going to choose. As we went over the pros and cons of the cemetery site and the Estabrook School site, is the cemetery road, the pros were it was in a location approved by the fire department. It had an open lot, well, there were trees on it, but there was no building and there were no wetlands. Is the biggest con was the cost to acquire the land and then we need to put a water line up to it and do road improvements to Cemetery Road, which could have easily added a million dollars to the cost. <coughs> the Estabrook site, the pros were the town owns it, uh, the utilities were nearby, and would create a public safety complex in conjunction with the police department. The cons of it was the cost of demolition of the Estabrook School, wetlands issues, is safe access and egress for emergency vehicles and separating it from the public. The majority at the public hearing favored the Estabrook site. In November, the town voted on whether to bond the money to build the fire station and improve the police station, and that was approved. And there was a non-binding vote of where to site the fire station. And the majority voted for the Estabrook site. The Estabrook School was built in 1947. The Doran addition, where the police station is, was built in 1968, thereabouts. The school stopped using it in the 1990s, and the town acquired it. As the police moved into the Doran part in about 2008, I believe. And the Estabrook has been used for storage and police and fire training. <coughs> is in 2016, negotiations began with a housing partnership out of Portsmouth for elderly, elderly housing at the Estabrook School. This is before we came <coughs> into the idea of using it for a fire station. The agreement was the housing partnership could acquire the land for a nominal fee pending voter approval and them getting their funding. <coughs> the town approved them getting the land, but they did not get their funding. The housing partnership had an option on the land until January 17th of the next year, I believe, which expired. Um, and just as an aside to that, at the time when they were doing the planning for the elderly housing, Police Chief Tim Town did not approve of where the access to the elderly housing was going to be because it interfered with the interaction of the police department. After the vote in November, well, before the vote in November, we had hired an architect, Port City Architect, to help us with this. And afterwards, we hired a construction manager, Landry and French, and design engineers and civil engineers. We have one from Blaze Engineering with us tonight. And they were, they were tasked with the duty of putting the fire station on that site. The site has many restrictions on it. The topography of the land, it drops, I think, approximately 30 feet from the high point to the low point of that land. Um, there's a lot of wetlands involved um, with the new fire station <coughs> and 
parking and drive and everything, there'd be a lot of impervious surfaces. Again, impervious surfaces didn't come up. Um, and we're looking at safe access, you know, separating emergency vehicles from public traffic. Um, to do that, we look, we're looking at building a new access road out to Sullivan Street, is along what most people know as the pathway to the school. Is the Goodriches originally gave the town use of that road, that, that path for access to the school. During the subdivision of the property, the Wedgwood Manor, Wedgwood, Wedgwood Commons, system, Wedgwood Commons, <laughs> is um, the town was granted continued use of that pathway. And then after the subdivision had taken place, the owners came to the town and offered to give the land from the pathway south to the next border to the town. It was, a, technically it was their green space and they couldn't build on it. <coughs> so rather than them accept the responsibility and liability and taxes, they gave it to the town. And we so it's green it. space. Huh? So it's green space. Um, <laughs> is currently we're negotiating with the current owner of Woodwood Commons to acquire additional land for uh, a roadway so we can avoid wetlands there. <clears throat> the new fire station will be built for the town's needs for the next 50 years, and hopefully longer. Um, the current police station is 50 years old now, and before the next 50 years are up, we're going to need to do something there. I don't think I plan on being around in 50 years, but somebody will be, and so. <clears throat> there's been some discussion of continuing putting elderly housing at the Estabrook site. As you will see from the plans being presented, is um, it seems impossible to do that because of the way the topography of the land is in the site is the police chief <coughs> doesn't think elderly housing should be there. The fire chief doesn't think elderly housing be, should be there. The architects, the construction manager, the engineers all don't think that elderly housing should be put there. And most of the town officials that I've spoken to don't think elderly housing should be put there. This is something that we're looking at as a public safety <coughs> complex. Um, there was some discussion about what to do with that space behind the police station and fire station now that is gonna be so-called empty space is uh, the plans are, original plans were for the fire department to use that as training. That was one of the advantages of the site up on Cemetery Road is having the area that they could do training in. Um, since we spoke about during our committee meetings about the use of that land is the town has, uh, is we did a three town meeting a couple weeks ago with North Burke and Lebanon. We spoke with a representative from Revision Energy um, about solar arrays and what could be done. And when we discussed the new fire station, the existing police station in that land, it was all suggested that that would be a great place to put a solar array for the town. Um, one of the things that people don't realize, I didn't realize until that meeting, is the town can have a solar array and then use the electricity generated by that array to offset nine different accounts. So we could use that solar array to offset the account of the fire station, the police station, the town hall, the water department, the transfer station, the recreation field, and looks like three more you know, things that we could use it for. So um, that's the history of how we got here is I will leave it to the architects and engineers to do the presentation. Um, if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. All right. <clears throat> do you have anything, Lee J? Usually I start off with you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I did prepare a memo for you. Um, please, was, please speak to the microphone, Lee J. My sorry. wife can yell at me sorry. if I don't enforce it. I, I, I apologize. I did do a quick memo for you. It's a one-page uh, uh, memo at this point um, since everything is still um, 
kind of moving forward with, with the plans. The applicant is proposing to construct a new 17,888 square foot fire station to be located on the same property as, as the existing police station with its primary access off Sullivan across from Rollins Street, a secondary access off Logan, um, off Logan Street. The building will sit on the site of the old school. The storm water will be handled by sheet flow and water and storm ponds to flow, um, to slow the flow off site. This is a very um, effective way to handle the stormwater during storm periods. I have not seen the stormwater analysis at this point, but would like to know if the engineers has, um, have done a model for a 100-year storm in sizing the ponds. Um, the reason I, sp I bring that up is more and more 100-year storms are occurring on a more <laughs> frequent basis, and we're starting to move stormwater standards to an area of requiring 100-year um, storm analysis and subdivision regulations especially. Both, sewer and sewer and both water and sewer service will come off from the existing services on Sullivan Street to serve the building while a new utility pole will be placed on the site near the Sullivan Street entrance and run underground on the property to a new transformer and generator pad located to the southwest of the proposed parking area. The plan does not show that the site will have a great deal of external lighting at this time. The plans do show a detail for the light light foundation, but no cut sheets for a light fixtures to ensure they will be dark sky friendly. Uh, the team working on the plans have also submitted both elevations and renderings of the building for the board to see. This time I have no other issues concerning uh, concerns for the board on the project. Um, plans were pretty well developed. Um, there's not a lot to it. Uh, so I think that as, as you get into this, there may be some issues that pop up, but I think this is going to be a pretty straightforward process for you. All right, I'll turn it over to the architect in this right. presentation. Ready to blind you. That's why I'm moving. Yeah. Well, you got to move. Oh, <laughs> you got you to take your chair with you. Yeah, you got to take your chair with you, David. Catch. <laughs> How you guys doing tonight? I'm Andy Highland with Port City Architecture. This is uh, Jason Pika from our office. He's our project manager. And in the back corner is Todd Gammon from Blaze Engineering. He's our civil engineer. Uh, so uh, what we'd just like to do tonight is just kind of familiarize the board with what we're doing, kind of let you know so you, so you can start thinking of questions that you're going to have for us and, uh, and just to kind of give you an overview of, of the project. So, uh, as Tom said, the, uh, uh, the uh, vote in the town was to move it to move the station that we had done some preliminary design on, on Cemetery Road to the Estabrook site. So what we did was took a look at the site and uh, modified our uh, building to, uh, to fit this site. So here's, uh, so this is the existing police station right now. Uh, this is kind of an unused, the old gym. This is the original building up above that's in pretty uh, heavy disrepair right now. So where we took a look at uh, putting the uh, station was to kind of create a public safety complex uh, on the site. So we're locating the new fire station on the lower field that's down here. Part of the reason for that, uh, as I kind of get back here, is that uh, talking with the chief, uh, one of the first things we look at is how do we get fire trucks in and out of the site. Uh, going up to Logan here, if so if we're going out on this end of town, going up to Logan, they, they can't really, there's a couple of turns that are really tight up in this area. So we couldn't really go through Logan uh, if we, to, to respond to a fire emergency on, the, on this side of town. So that's why we took, uh, we took this that was the little path and come out to Sullivan Street on the side. And the other thing we look at when we do this is, is really trying to divide the uh, private, uh, you know, public circulation of vehicles from apparatus so we don't get into situations that somebody gets into an accident or, you know, starts driving up an access drive. So this is, this is going to be restricted to just uh, uh, emergency vehicle use as is the lane kind of coming out here to Logan. Uh, now, as I said, you can't really go that way. Uh, most, probably 90% of the traffic will come out and into Sullivan Street. We do expect some going over to School Street here, Logan, they can make a right and make a right again. This is a fairly steep grade, but the other uh, reason for this is maybe to get call company volunteers. If you're on this side of town, 
uh, an access into the site and, and parking in there. So I'm going to just kind of, I'm just going to go on over the basics. I'm going to bring Todd in here in a little bit to talk about all those exciting, uh, you know, utilities and, and uh, site drainage, et cetera. So what we tried to do was, uh, uh, was kind of take the site. This is similar uh, to what we had presented on Cemetery Road. We kind of took it and took a bend to it so that the apparatus could get out and get quick access. It's a drive, it's a f uh, four drive through bays. So it's gonna be double deep so you can get uh, equipment on both sides. Some of the, if uh, we get into uh, EMS uh, use in the future, they might be able to come out this way. Uh, and, uh, but anyway, it's easier. Uh, it's, it, drive through bays are a much easier uh, situation uh, to go in. Uh, looking at creating a little bit of a courtyard right in here, uh, maybe a, a little memorial, fire memorial. We're going to bring the bell uh, from the existing fire station, put a, a little bell tower in the front here. Uh, on the police station, it we do, does involve some work on the police station. So we're going to uh, take this area. It's not, uh, it's kind of uh, in not great repair right here. We're going to uh, brick up the front. And what the police would like to do is have this as, use it as a sally port. Uh, and, may, and then they can store cruisers in here out of the weather. We can probably get about six of them in this old gym. So there'll be a, a door in the back and a door through the front. They're not going to come screaming out of here or anything like that, but it'll just keep uh, cars uh, uh, out of the weather and cruisers out of the weather. The other uh, aspect of this would be to kind of maybe update their entrance over here uh, so that uh, it kind of turns the whole uh, uh, building into, you know, a complex, I guess I'd say. Uh, doors, so coming out. I'll let Todd get into more. Of the uh, of the issues, uh, these are the apparatus bays here on the end. Sorry, so I'm kind of struggling here. There we go. Try to spin us around a bit. There we go. So on this, uh, so these are the four bays. This side will be a lot of storage. Uh, the uh, call company will be parking over on this side and here. Then they'll be able to come right in uh, into the equipment and, uh, and have quick access out. Uh, training tower in here just for uh, uh, fire training exercises that that's going to have. This is going to include a uh, living area and administration area. Just a quick uh, shot I know of the floor plan. So up in the front, so this is if you this is the front corner that you saw where the tower is and the main entrance. Police station is on this side. So it's it starts with administration area, then there's living area in the back here, day room, some bunk rooms. Most fire stations are uh, turning into more and more uh, paid staff these days. It's hard to pull a call company <coughs> up uh, in, in a lot of towns. This is uh, lockers, uh, storage in the back here. So one story uh, building, and, uh, and we're working again to uh, fit it on the site and, uh, and, uh, and work out uh, the, any issues that we have. So it's the same size as what we proposed. We're having Landry French is working on the budget, make sure that we're staying on budget as we go. And I think... Uh, Unless you had questions on the general kind of ideas of it, I can uh, bring Todd over. You want me to run this or you want to run it? Did you guys have uh, initial questions or you just want to go through the whole kind of site? Go through it. Sure. Yeah, okay. So Todd Gammon, um, civil engineer with Blaze Civil, civil Engineers out of Scarborough. Um, I guess the first drawing is the, uh, we had a surveyor come in and do a full boundary survey. There's multiple parcels that we piece together. The main parcel is about 
um, a 9.9 seven acre, almost 10 acre parcel that includes the um, Esther Brook and the, the senior housing that's leased. Uh, the town obviously owns this uh, parcel here with the parking lot. This is the one that uh, the selectman mentioned that we they the town acquired a few years back from the Wedgwood Commons. Uh, and then there's a little piece right here up to the first pin along Sullivan Road that uh, we're in talks with right now with the owner to, to purchase. Uh, this is the 15 foot path. So in terms of uh, navigation, we thought the best route would be to come in off Sullivan. The utilities are easily accessible from here. There's a little bit of a fill. Try to follow the 15 foot path as best we could because obviously that was already filled. Uh, had a wetland delineation done. Wetlands each side of that. There is an MDEP regulated stream that goes through the parcel uh, that will a potential for four permits actually through the DEP for this. Uh, there's about 1.6 acres of new impervious area from the building and the uh, you know the sweeps for the fire trucks and the parking and the access out route ac out to Logan and down through. These are 20 foot wide trying to limit the impervious as, as best we can. Um, the trigger for a stormwater permit with the state of Maine is one acre of new impervious area. Uh, you have to treat 95% of the impervious area with some sort of filtering system for stormwater through the DEP. We will trigger uh, likely a tier one. We just got the wetlands this week, so we're going to take a look at the implications for, uh, you know, here's the grading plan. We're obviously going to have some grading, follow that 15 foot path out. We're going to have some uh, wetlands disturbance down here and here. We're going to have the stream crossing. So anything. There's a, what's called a permit by rule for the stream crossing. Anything within 75 feet of a protected resource will trigger that. Those are minor, probably a tier one NERPA wetlands permit, and then the stormwater permit. The benefit of the demolition of the Estherbrook School is we get to take a, some net credit for the removal of that. Also, there was the basketball court, and there's some impervious that on the site right now. Uh, so pretty soon we're going to have a pre-app meeting with the DEP. We'll discuss how that's going to be factored in, but. Uh, as the planner mentioned, uh, we held off from submitting any HydroCAD calculations at this point, but I can run the 210, 25, and 100 year storm. And uh, the, this filter will have an impact for qu quantity flow, which is really the town ordinance. The DEP doesn't look at quantity, they look at all water quality. So um, we'll be looking at both. The, there's a couple of cross culverts now with the path we're going to continue those and probably come out into some level of spreaders and spread the flow out as best we can this will all be throttled with a uh, it's called 18 inch MDEP filter media the, it'll be under drain uh, the the flow will be restricted and uh, it'll be released in a manner that is less than the pre-development condition from the site um, as Andy mentioned this is a relatively uh, easy slope getting out uh, out of the firehouse coming left and right here. This is about 11.5% slope. Uh, probably mainly be used as an exit. And I've got some uh, stormwater flows coming down th through the building here. In terms of the utilities, uh, we've got a pole right here at the entrance. We've got 8 inch water out in Sullivan. We've got, you know, sewer. So we're going to be bringing in gravity sewer to the building. Going to be treating the floor drains in an oil water separator. Uh, discharging that in the sanitary. I've already had some communication with the Berwick Water District, the Sewer District, uh, the Sewer District's engineer, and uh, Public Works. We looked at some site distance here that works, then out on Logan. Um, so we'll probably come in with on an overhead one new pole and then go underground electric into a generator pad, transformer pad, and then into the building. Still working some of those details out. Uh, thinking about a couple of dumpster pad in back here that the police and fire can both utilize. Uh, they're going to have a hydrant on site that they can access for training. Um, a little bit of, for the public entrance, just making sure this meets ADA with the slopes. Uh, so I'm looking at that. We're getting the final topography uh, actually tomorrow 
from the surveyor who had originally done the boundary, but then they went back out and did the topo and existing additions, so we'll have uh, a few more details. Have, I believe, 27 parking spaces at this point. We reduced it down a few. Uh, and obviously the main, if this is mainly used as an exit, I'm thinking that it would, you know, we'd likely come in on Sullivan um, <coughs> and wrap around here to, to get in behind the building. So, uh, like I said, trying to limit that as best we can in terms of the total impervious. Um, there's a little bit of utility work over here at the police station, potentially an overhead pole. They've got an overhead fiber line we're looking at. And also there's a pole behind the Esterbrook School. Uh, and there's a CMP meter and also the water uh, is fed to the police station off Logan. So uh, we're gonna be looking at this vault and a wraparound road into the Sally Port, in and out of the building that Andy described with the overhead doors for the police. So there's a little bit of uh, site work on, on both sides. Still trying to think through what this entrance is exactly, but um, in terms of, just trying to think of some of the other uh, aspects, probably put together some, maybe a photometric, we're gonna look at the wall packs. I've got three poles shown on there now, but uh, we just discussed it at a meeting before, before tonight's planning board meeting. We're gonna look a little more at you know what kind? What what are the lumens that are coming off for the uh, off the wall packs? And, and uh, obviously we want to make it operational, but keep the light pollution to a minimum. And uh, so hoping to have the DEP meeting soon. And okay. yeah, open to questions if anybody. Uh, I have questions, but I'm not sure they're for you. Okay. Um, my, one of my questions is if you're going to be utilizing the open space for the Wed Wedgwood subdivision, where is that open space now going to be located? Because the whole purpose of open space is open space, not access points. Well, the new plan now isn't to use the land to the south of the path, it's to use the path itself and the land that we're okay. going to acquire to the north of the path for the entrance. Yes. I'm glad you mentioned the path. That leads me to my second question. In the original deed, deeding that path over, there are conditions on the deed, and the first two conditions say it's to be used to be, you know, a path for the schoolhouse. And the second condition, it says that the town shall erect and maintain suitable posts at both ends of the right-of-way located so that vehicles cannot make use of the right-of-way and shall erect a fence on each side of said right-of-way. The posts at the ends uh, and the fence at the sides to be erected with the approval of the grantors. So how is it that you can take away conditions that are on a deed? Because as far as I know, you can't take away conditions that are on a deed. Is the, the, is my understanding was that when the family that still owned the land mm -hmm. gave us the rest of the land that went with it with no more restrictions on it other than you know the town could continue you can take using you can just take restrictions off of a deed it's, it's a, in real estate a, school they tell you you can't do that so well that was an easement <laughs> okay for the previous owner the mm -hmm. town now owns the land so they don't need to have so an easement they don't they can just they eliminate in, those restrictions so it's a, it would be if the other owners or some a, a, a third party bought mm -hmm. it and owned it that would stay in force if those owners had sold it to a third party or fourth party. There are no what there are no there's no one else no one else involved except for the town Correct. of Berwick. Yeah. Right so what, it's, this would be a case where now the town owns it, so the easement's no longer in effect. And okay. Our our, our uh, surveyors. Uh, Looked they looked at, yeah, deep. Yeah, they okay. That was that area was area one of my agreement. big. That, we, we saw that okay, too. that was like a big concern. Yeah. On that same line that you've opened yeah. up, so what happens to the walking qualities for children and people to yeah. come out of the Estabrook towards the ball field now? The, yeah, on that twenty that. foot on a twenty foot road. Well, so. Is that still going to be a safe and accessible way for people Put to connect? Put a sidewalk on it, perhaps. It's all part of the Envision Berwick plan with it the spine and our, all that yeah. stuff? Um, in our comprehensive plan. So looking at uh, 
And when we look at the uh, at the when we looked at the site with the fire chief, our first thing was how are we going to get vehicles, you know, in and out of here? And uh, let me see if I can get back to a plan like uh, this plan. So. Uh, so we had a couple of options. One was trying to get out and share the public access and uh, get down to, what's the street down? Wilson. There? Wilson, thank you. I know we don't like that because there's gonna be, the public drives up and down this street and this street to School Street. So it's really not safe or feasible to have uh, you know, a fire apparatus responding to emergency that's screaming down the road to share it with any kind of public, uh, you know, in a, in, a, in a parking lot area. Have somebody backing out of a parking lot, the fire truck comes down, and it's a bad uh, situation. So Logan Street, as I explained, was, uh, whoops, sorry. We can't get out to the Sullivan Street side up here because right. there's just I too many. Right, I understand that. Hard what about sidewalks and like because right now part of our comprehensive right. plan includes right. so um, th so that this as is, a walking trail. So that's right. uh, and and this is the only safe way out for apparatus. Mm -hmm. I I would be hesitant to walk kids up a, a you know a, an emergency egress route, honestly. Uh, uh, it yeah. would have to be in a separate location, uh, or at least separated by it. Curvy. By feet. It'd be it. Well, even then, I'm not you know going to feel good about a fire truck screaming down uh, that 20 foot wide road. Even if we added a five foot sidewalk, I, I just I don't think mm -hmm. it's a good idea. Yeah, I'm just looking toward our comprehensive plan, which says that, which is yeah. what dictates what we ha what decisions we make. So, so if we could put this anywhere else, we would. But this is the only really feasible. The town about the voted green space to have it on there. this site, and if it's you have it on this site, that's the only exit. As far as, far as addressing accessibility, the town still owns land on either side of that path. Yeah, it is not eliminating any entrance through there in the future. Is we have land around the building, around the site that we can still utilize. Right. But is I agree with. So let's put a path on there so people can still walk, even on the the south side, the lower side of that. If there was a some kind of a footpath that went even just directly to the police station or the front entrance there, on this, something to maintain. On this area, yeah. you, you'd really have to put your galoshes on. I know. I walk my dogs <laughs> through there, so I do know, it, it, I do it know that. It is really it, wet. I know it's wet and, over you there. Know, so we're filling, and we got a, a, a DEP, you know, fill application mm -hmm. to do, you know, to widen it. So we're taking that path, and but we need to have embankment down the yeah. side. I, you know, I, I'm just saying, I, we're, that's why we're here. I'm yeah. not sure what to tell you. Yeah. I, I would just be hesitant to put a curb and a sidewalk along that road. It's not really, it's not a road per se, it's an emergency apparatus <coughs> egress road. And I know the Well, which is, which is actually what they have on School Street. That School Street entrance is only for emergency vehicles. Um, the public cannot use that, because I've tried to, and then I turned around. This so that right there is emergency, that's um, for the police vehicles to access school street. I believe oh, that the you can, everybody goes. You have? The, it says there are signs. There's uh, the, It's a one way. You can't come in. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe I was trying to go out. <laughs> I thought that was, so I thought is, that was. This is yeah. where we're trying. And even though the police might exit out through this area, yeah. this is where they park. Yeah. Uh, th again, they're not responding. They're not sitting in the station responding to emergencies. Right, right. Like the fire oh, yeah. No, so I, I agree that that's call. a good access point. I just yeah. want to see some kind of foot traffic preserved there because yeah, yeah. that's what our comprehensive plan says. And so, that's what dictates every right. decision we make. The, the goal is, well, but we had a, we just spoke about 71 Sullivan Street, just across Sullivan Which Street. Which is literally, from this, yeah. About this parking area. The goal is to tie that into this spine that goes from prime tanning and down to the river yeah. and then up to the library and Penny Ponds area. We'll, It'd be a shame to lose that. Yeah, we'll, we'll look into I that. Like I said, I just want to keep it not on that road. Brick wall in between connecting. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not a brick wall, Nile. I mean, there's like Tom said, there's all kinds of ways. You well, can but get we just heard the, we just heard that this would be unsafe 
to have any walking paths go through it. Uh, on that, on this uh, uh, on that straight. on that road, I'm just saying I wouldn't put a curb and a sidewalk and encourage children I'll, to walk I'll, up. I'll speak on behalf of Envision Berwick. I've been in Envision Berwick chair longer than I want to be. Happy to be the chair, but in fact, the chair forever. Uh, anyways. Yeah, the green spine is a great concept. Unfortunately, the town voted two to one to have it here. So that effectively really um, takes a lot of the space. You can see where the fire station is, is basically the main use to have a green spine there. I, you have a great point, it's part of the comprehensive plan. But as far as connectivity goes, I mean, obviously I think about this a lot. And um, I mean, we just have to use Sullivan Street and, and Logan Street now. and we're gonna have to just address that connectivity. And I think it's fine, like I think you can get from 71 Sullivan Street down to Sullivan Street. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think- I think uh, it's sad. I walk fire on that trucks little path weekly. <laughs> I believe in direct democracy. I, I would have liked but to when see- When the fire trucks go up that 20 road, foot, that 20 foot road to, to Sullivan Street, they're gonna go around that corner and you're gonna have people there on Sullivan Street. Mm. Anyway, I don't see the difference you know, l making some kind of pedestrian, safe pedestrian access near this place that, you know, this 20 foot strip that you're gonna build up to get out of there. I, There's I, gotta th be a safe way to do it. There might be, you know, I'm not saying no, I'm just saying I, I, I suspect the fire chief would, uh, would also be really wary of that. If, if we did it anyway, we'd, ha we'd have to put a fence up. We'd have to make it safe somehow. Hmm. Sure. Uh, so, agreed. All yeah. Right, yeah. So I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying yeah. we're concerned about it. Why did you decide to tear down the Estabrook School, or have um, you not decided that? We no. It's uh, it's 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 in the way. Uh, th so let me get on. That's to how here. progress works. Old things are in the way. Yeah. Yeah. Progress is often in the eye of the beholder. So let's. let's <laughs> here's uh, here's the footprint of the Estabrook <laughs> School. So we're, we're very limited in, you know, even though it seems like a big area in, in where we can put this, this building. Basically where, where all this kind of buffer is here, that's kind of, it's a wetland, it's a stream issue. So we're really talking about this skinny piece right here that we can put the building on. Uh, because this is, it's the, because again of all the wetlands, uh, this path was really the only feasible uh, egress or exit for, for emergency uh, equipment. So that kind of leads us to, so originally we had kind of a, a just a, on the other cemetery site, it was just square. Uh, this one we've had to turn the apparatus bays to really exit here. So they're all kind of coming out and all squeezing into this 20 foot drive. Can, can you show me again where the Estabrook School is, the footprint? Of oh, I'm sorry, this like dash line right there? Right. So that's it. So this is, so we've located the building. It's, it's pretty tight. We also have a CMP easement here uh, going through the site. Uh, I'm trying again to keep the public side, the public entrance, and segregated for safety on the front here. So this, this is really kind of setting where the building goes. So now if I set, and, and, and it's not long enough, I can't make it longer to have a, uh, just one-sided bays. We really got to have uh, uh, drive-through bays, which are better anyway for the fire department. So now if I bring an emergency apparatus in, the, the you know, 100 foot, you know, long uh, uh, ladder trucks have a big, wide radius. This is, and we're trying to keep these this impervious down as much as we can because we're, we're trying to, you know, stay uh, uh, within a smaller DEP footprint. But that's really where that bank of, of tarmac would go. And when you look at uh, the grading, so this is grading it up to to the the uh, you know safe grade away from this uh, from the uh, asphalt and we're like well uh, into the school you know I've I've looked at the school too and if you had hired me or hired our firm to to reuse that school uh, if there was nothing else here uh, I would say tear it down and build new uh, it's in really poor condition. So you're gonna, 
If you were going to reuse that, redevelop it, you're going to pull all the siding off, you're going to pull all the windows off, you're stripping everything out in the middle, you're stripping all the electrical, you're stripping the mechanical systems, you're taking the roof off, you're redoing the new roof. To really use that school, the only thing you're going to be using, and then if we're putting kitchens and bathrooms in the school, I'm tearing up the entire concrete floor. So all that we've got left is a foundation and a wood building. I, I don't so even if the fire and police station wasn't here and you were going to try to redevelop that school and I was your architect, I would say tear it down and build on the same spot, build over here, build what you want. Uh, I appreciate that, but yeah. you, you, you do understand, having heard the chairman of the Board of Selectmen, that somebody was under the impression that it was usable. Right, right, right. So yep. clearly the reasonable minds can differ as to whether the existing building is usable. Sure, that's my professional opinion. Okay, so, all. so have you discussed with the town other possible uses for that building? Clearly, I understand senior housing is no longer an option, but have, has anybody considered any other use for that building? I, I said I'd, we don't think it's feasible because of the grading and the site, because of where we can put our building. I, I can't fit it in there. I can't fit the fire station reasonably uh, without tearing that building down. That's, you know, and we try, I mean, we're, we got no, you know, dog in the race or whatever. I mean, we're here, you know, for the town and, you know, and if that's your desire, we'd try as best we can to do it. But it's, it, it's really, it's difficult uh, to do. During our discussions, you no, know, from the, the building committee here in Morgan Heaven is, you no, know, we, we discussed the possibility of reuse of that and, we all came to the conclusion that there was no reuse there that was compatible with the public safety complex. Is the topography of the land, the lay of the land, is getting access to that, is you would have to create an entrance either coming through the police driveway or down off of Logan Street. And that, you no know, nullifies all our efforts to minimize the interaction of the emergency vehicles in the public safety. And as I said when I did my introduction, is we are looking at that space for either training of the firemen, you know, using that for their training, or as I said, we had a, a talk with the people from Revision Energy, and uh, you know, we first we discussed the new fire station and the existing police station, and then that parcel came up as possible for a solar array. Yeah. So yes, we have looked at other uses for it. I and as I said also, is the existing police station is 50 years old. Is more than likely in 50 years, something's gonna have to happen there, and whether they expand or build new, then the town will have that space, and we can continue having a public safety complex. Thank you. Uh, and a, fur a further answer to your question, I mean, we did, that's the first thing I considered was, can we use that building for the fire station? And because it's like 10 feet higher in proximity, yeah. it makes it really difficult yeah. for that as well. In um, Wyndham, Maine, they have a public safety complex, and then right next door to it, they've got a skate park, which is really cool because the police are there, the fire are there, and um, nothing bad goes on there, but it's a safe, uh, healthy outlet for the kids. And this parcel being right downtown, I'd love to see that space, maybe not a solar array, but maybe something that benefits the town in a recreation way. Um, other, you know, that, that maybe a dog park. I don't know, some people walk their dogs through there every week. <laughs> yeah, I, you, you, know, you know what scares me about what you, you hit uh, one good topic there, is I'm getting the feeling that because this is a safety complex, the pedestrian aspects of this Estabrook parcel are going away. They are. Yeah. And That's this exactly is what's right happening. smack yeah. dab in the There's middle. There's no question about that. Yeah. And they right don't want, and they don't the want us there and because it's not safe yeah, anymore. There's got to be ways, even elevated pathways, so some way so that pedestrians can go through here both that way and north and south. I think that's a discussion that should have happened a year ago. When this, when this That's not too late, James. This is, this, yeah, we put sidewalks in all the time in all different, many places but when they come. This is the time to dial that in. That's right. That, this is what you're, they're here for, What's to the distance dial this from in, here right? To there? 300 feet? It's a 20-foot sidewalk, yeah, so Todd, do you remember offhand? Uh, yeah, I, I, even yeah, if it's yeah, a pedestrian pathway. Yeah. yeah. Put, it on, put it on stilts. 
I mean, I've seen them uh, all over, you know, very wet areas. So what's, the, what's, the, what's the point of walking through it? To connect the ball field through this pine that we've wanted for the last four years, heading north and south. Yeah, to Knox Lane, which is where the it's supposed to connect. And the plan has to connect. always been to connect the downtown. You were in charge of all this. <laughs> I know, but now there's a fire station in the middle of it. it, it we just heard that a fire station is not incompatible with people. With the public, yeah. I mean, it's look, not. At, look at the it, Bronx. Look at, and how is nothing, it that somebody can nothing. ignore the comprehensive plan because it's convenient? There is nothing. I mean, if that's the case, then what are we doing here? There is nothing in that plan that precludes us from discussing this at a future date. Thank you. Because we're here to discuss the fire station that the town voted to put here knowing full well that it was going to be taking the Estabrook School down and it was going to be limiting access They didn't to know that. that. Yep. I yep. voted on that. I didn't know that no, that was coming I didn't know, was, that. I didn't you know, know it was coming Our public out. hearings had, we discussed it in length at our public the hearings, we measure. discussed it in length during our meetings is it has been discussed multiple times that that was going to be coming down is when Andy came with his very first proposal for putting the, the building there before the town voted on it he had a map that shows to be demolished yeah I'm so, less concerned about Estabrook school and more concerned about maintaining public access it, to land nothing, which is which we own the public plans. owns that this is our land yeah, yeah. I, that's what I, our land. that's what I wanted to hear Tom. <laughs> Yeah, there is nothing in this plan that precludes it. We're here to discuss the fire station and improvements to the right. police station. Well, this is part, but this is part yeah. of it. You you are here to discuss that. This is the this is the process that we go through as a planning board. You bring us a plan, and then we say we want to see this, 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 and this. If you want your plan, that's how it goes. So and that's what we're saying. And one of the things saying. we have to consider is is it compatible with the area? And if all along this has been envisioned, right? And I use that word intentionally. Yeah. as part of a green spine, then maybe we had a, need to have that discussion right now, not at some point in the future. But it's good to have it now. And, you know, I, I, I think it it's fantastic that we're putting a public uh, place like this with fire and police downtown mm -hmm. where the post office should be, where a whole bunch of other stuff should be. It, it is compatible. Lee J, I know you've been desperately waiting. You have a very good I have, to bring I up. only have one comment to make, and it's absolutely got nothing to do with trails or <laughs> any kind of good <laughs> planning stuff. But I had heard earlier um, the comment made about um, negotiating with one of the abutters to buy some of their land. And I just want to make sure that if that's going to happen, that you're, you look at it and make sure that you're not going to make that lot non-conforming. They have enough room. Do they have enough frontage? Yeah. They have and they have enough, they the and, the and they meet the, the lot size requirements, yeah. even after that. They have plenty. Okay. The I frontage from what other side? Not on Pine Hill, or not on Sullivan Street, whatever they it is have, there? They have land on one side, and then it's the Wedgwood Common. Yeah. It's the Wedgwood Inn. Right. Lot. Right, right. So it's, it extends. It's on Logan Street, or Knox Lane, it's whatever on, that is. It's got two openings on Sullivan. Okay, okay. And it's big. He has room right. for, he's got like, like two acres. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure we're not creating a non-conforming situation that we don't have to. Okay, it's uh, this, this piece here we're talking about. Okay. Taking, and it was mainly to just so we could grade in there. I think they're going to cut this piece down and take this little sliver beside the. And that doesn't affect the path. open space for the subdivision at all. So our, the surveyors have gone right, through yeah. it and put the area. So. Well, it doesn't mean that they've looked at the open space plan and preserved yeah, that. Okay, all right, touche. So, I mean, that's, like I said, that that's, I'm just trying to give you the logical mm -hmm. kind of how yeah. we look at it. And, and that was really, how do you get apparatus that's a downtown site safely in and out? How do you keep the public safe when they're circulating around it? And that's really, uh, you know, to get to uh, an emergency call on the Sullivan Street side of town, that was really the only option to get out. Is it a typical uh, way to set up police and fire on the same site to separate the traffic of, of each one of those purposes? Or do they... Uh, is there, that are, 
they're okay together more. It's just really the public and the and the professional police and fire that you really ch just want to separate for safety. So that's like I said, this is kind of where we're. This is our public side. It's where the public comes in now. It's uh, this is the uh, there's the old school that's over here. So this area right here is public public parking or, or for the the uh, apartments that are here you get to this point and then back in the back of the police station that's police uh, circulation and then this whole area the spine would just be professional firefighter circulation there and again I mean don't get me wrong I'm, I'm there's pro I'm sure there's a way for to yeah. your path through here I just want to bring it up right away that I Right. It's not just the sidewalk on the side of... Yeah, that's fine. No, I appreciate that. And, and you know the things that we don't know, yeah. um, but we know the comprehensive plan, which yeah. you don't know. So, I mean, right here it says that it is the responsibility of, and the planning board is one of them, to make downtown pedestrian friendly and accessible by creating safe, continuous routes to, from, and through downtown for pedestrians and non-motorized vehicles. Mm -hmm. And this is in our comprehensive plan. So. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, that possibility through you know somewhere, you know through the site? I, yeah. I just like to keep people. This is the w area I'm just concerned. That about. I I Talks totally to appreciate. Totally that's, appreciate that's, that. Yeah, that's that's, that's, fine. Yeah. that's fine. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. But there's a lot of acreage right there. But but you could. Nobody's suggesting moving the building or anything like yeah. that. Yeah 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 yeah. No. No. We're talking. We just want access. Right. Is there some other way to keep the connection going? Yeah. Okay. I, I know we have a brook that's going to drain along here. We could actually make a skating rink there and provide access in and out of that, you know, with a pathway of some type. I mean, the, the future is open, and that's what I want to know. The future okay. is now. The fu oh. <laughs> no, it's tomorrow. I think there should be some way to make it so that people can walk through the you know, that middle courtyard that's, there. That's what I'm yeah. thinking, and then up through. There should through be something absolutely cut right through there we can we can take the, this little building here we've been debating on i mean that could come down widen this connection if if need be i mean it looks that's, like there is going to be a sidewalk yeah, up that's the back just of a the garage building. right now I yeah think. i think it was like an old the, kitchen the, warming <laughs> kitchen or something like yeah. that the, the police nobody's going to mess with that the storage right now but i mean that's if the if it was you know that's with a with a sally port they'll have Plenty of room for like the the big four wheeler they have and that kind of stuff. But they they're looking at evidence storage and things like that, you know, yeah. holding cells, holding cells, things like that in that area where they don't have to bring prisoners into the police station. Yeah, there's yeah, still enough room to. Be under there's still enough room for a sidewalk <laughs> right there without yeah. knocking that stuff down, but. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, it looks doable as long as you know what we want and we know what you want. <coughs> but we're here. That's why we're here, just to, you know, get your views. Okay. All right. Other comments? Like I said, it's still, you know, this is, we're working away, but it's still preliminary. Uh, just wanted to get it to you soon. Okay. Is that enough for one night? Any other mm -hmm. questions? I mean, we're not taking action tonight. No, we're not that doing was it. A good <coughs> it was really cool, actually. Yeah. You stayed awake out there, right? I did. <laughs> I, think no, it, I think it did a nice job. Thanks. <laughs> Thought I heard some Zs. <laughs> there you go. Um, I liked it when I saw it. I reviewed it. I looked it over multiple times. I really like it. Um, but that's the only things that we had talked about. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, it looks great. Yeah, I mean, cool. it looks fine. Okay. Thanks. Um, anybody else? Let's adjourn. We have to have public comment. Don't we have to well, you're right. We do have members of the public here. So, um, I think everybody the, here is fine. have to board of appeal. <laughs> Anybody public comment session before we close out the meeting this evening? Nobody? Okay. Next on the agenda would be the uh, adjournment. I move that we adjourn the meeting of May 2nd. There you go. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? That going to be me. I second. All, all in favor? Thank you. <laughs>